Breaking news in the Helium community that is worrying many people involved in the network and people who have purchased or ordered a Kotex hotspot. Kotex, the once approved Helium hotspot minor manufacturer, has been temporarily suspended by the Manufacturing Oversight Committee or the MOC. The committee has voted to temporarily suspend Kotex's network ability to onboard hotspots due to troubling patterns that have been observed with Kotex hotspots. A lot of information to unpack here and a lot to be excited about and maybe a little concerned as well. We have seen some conflicting opinions in the Discord regarding the handling of something like this from Helium and the MOC. We will also break down this chart and see why it alone raises some red flags regarding Kotex. Let's take a look at some of the details in today's video. <music> Hello everybody and welcome back to another video here on the Crypto Compound channel. In today's video, we will be discussing the recent suspension of the Kotex network on the Helium blockchain. The DWE MOC or Manufacturing Oversight Committee has voted to temporarily suspend Kotex network's ability to onboard new hotspots. They claim to have detected what they would call something like gaming where they're attempting to earn additional rewards or game the network to make it look like they are providing additional coverage. And this, of course, is of concern to Helium, the Helium community, and the DWE Wireless Alliance, who is uh, seems to be the ones that are, are uh, running this manufacturing oversight committee. We are going to get into a lot of the deep details. There is a lot to unravel here. They do go over some questions and some, some high-level answers here which is good we will touch on those quickly we will also be looking at we'll be looking at the cotex networks website for a for a little bit we will also be taking a look here at these graphs of which we can find something uh, somewhat of a concern it might make sense how they are the network is being gamed by these miners we will also take a look at the github pages for the dewey alliance uh process for onboarding hotspots we'll take a look at cotex's actual application here and the details behind it but before all that we will jump in quickly take a look at the price action here we drew uh we were looking at this chart just a few days ago it seems like we are really having trouble testing uh getting above this trend line here the short-term trend line we haven't had enough positive momentum or positive news here to bring us above this trend line it looks like we are coming to an apex here uh, between this support and this trend line here. It's going to be very interesting to see where we move. I would not like to see anything below $17, but it looks like we are teetering on that edge right now. Of course, we would love to see a break above this line, but we'll see where we move from there. But we do, if we do look at the performance, the relative performance of Helium, we have moved up a few spots from a few days ago. We are currently at 60 rank by market cap, which is a good place to be. We have typically been around 62, 63 rank. 60 is a great number. I'm happy to see us there. Of course, we'd love to get to the mid to low 50s, but we will see where we move. The next upswing will be very interesting to see if Helium gets a little bit more positive momentum, a little bit more bids, bidding up the price here and, and outperforming some of our peers here. We'll see how that turns out in the next positive news cycle here for crypto and for helium. Now, if we take a look here at the actual announcement, we'll see what does the suspension do. So it looks like they are only suspending the ability to onboard new Kotex hotspots. The existing Kotex hotspots will continue to function normally. This was cause for concern here in the Discord because a lot of people were very worried that the hotspots that they purchased and have on had spent time onboarding would no longer work. It looks like during this time of temporary suspension, or at least temporary for now, at this time of temporary suspension, they the current hotspots that have already been onboarded will continue to mine. I think that's fair. Uh, of course, it's not that many hotspots as of this point. I think it's only six or seven hundred that have been onboarded. It's pretty amazing that they've spotted it so quickly. Uh, it must be pretty blatant, honestly, for for that to happen. But they have they are only blocking the network's ability to onboard new Kotex hotspots as of this point. Why the suspension? We've identified. The, of course, this is. Uh, 
this is the wording of, I would say, the DWE MOC. We've identified a population of Kotex-associated hotspots that show troubling signs of gaming, attempts to earn rewards while not providing real coverage for the Helium network. While we acknowledge that any manufacturer hotspots can be abused this way, we are compelled to take action when the hotspots are directly under the control of the manufacturer or its major partners. So what they're saying here is that, of course, it is possible to spoof or game your own hotspot individually and independently, However, if it turns out that that, uh, that spoofing or that gaming is being controlled by a larger party or a larger manufacturer, of course, that is concern for the community, that is concern for Helium and the DWE Alliance. That is, uh, if that is found to be true, I imagine that this temporary manufacturer suspension is going to turn into a permanent manufacturer suspension. When will the suspension be lifted? No date has been set to reinstate Kotex's onboarding ability. The suspension will only be lifted once the MOC has completed its investigation and is convinced that Kotex Texas de deployment and sales plan will benefit the network overall. So this is really, really big news for the network. This is the first time I've been I've been involved in the community where we've seen something like this. Of course, if we take a look at this chart here, we can see that there are a huge number now of of makers. I mean, there used to be only three, four, five, um, and they only used to onboard a few new ones each month. However, in the recent weeks, there have been a tremendous amount of new makers, and this chart specifically is one of the most interesting. If we look here, Bobcat, I would say that Bobcat and Rack are the most reliable, the most well-known, they have the best reputation in the community. We support and would recommend the Bobcat and the Rack products. However, uh, and if we look here, we can see that Calchip and Bobcat are both right next to each other here on all of these charts each day, and they are averaging about the same amount of HNT per day. You can see 0 0.32, 0 0.32. Um, so that is very consistent with the with um, with the broader network. All right in this area right here, 0.32 a day is the average right now. And if we take a look here, we can see that long AP and Cotex networks are averaging well, consistently well above the the average which is very interesting they have just onboarded only uh, a few here as you can see it says number of hotspots only 154 that are averaging such a large amount averaging such a large amount of rewards per day over the the standard average is very interesting considering the sample size is so small uh, i do not know what the deal with long ap's is maybe i also is kind of strange to me but uh obviously the cotex the cotex networks rewards are somehow being overstated or gamed very concerning it's great to see that the for i think it's important to realize here that the actual network is and and helium in general the helium community and the, the dewey wireless alliance it's amazing to see I, I don't think we see this type of governing or regulation inside of other crypto projects the fact that this is going on and there's a committee that's watching these things and monitoring that everything is working properly and everyone is is playing by the same rules is amazing to see i'm cha i would challenge anybody to try and find another crypto project or network that has this similar this type of immediate response and oversight uh, to make sure that everything is working properly and fairly and as it should i think that speaks a very highly of helium the community the company the network everything it's really i think that's the first thing we should take away from this is that this this project this network is being monitored it is make it, there are people making sure that this is all working correctly in the way it should and there is nobody cheating or gaming the system but like i said very interesting to see here i guess it does make sense that there is something fishy going on considering this 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 increase for cotex networks and if we look up here we can only see we could see that the number of hotspots is 497 61 percent of the of them are online just some interesting data points there now here if we look this is the this is the dewey alliance hotspot manufacturers onboarding process you can see this is the this is the process that every manufacturer has to go through how to submit a helium hotspot manufacturer application they all go through this process step by step and it specifically outlines here that there is a manufacturing oversight committee approval process. And obviously this manufacturing oversight committee does not, their job does not end at the approval process, but clearly they are monitoring this network, which is just, I mean, that's what we need to build a strong global network of devices. We need that type of oversight. We need this type 
of stringent uh, transparency and regulation, quite frankly. Now, if we go here, we can see this is actually Cotex Network's GitHub. We can see um, it gives us all the information here. Of course, it is very difficult to really dig into the bones of these companies. It's a lot of times there are companies that create shell companies and they draw this type of map and they try and make things confusing to see how they came to where they are. So it's possible that that is that's what they've done. But overall, I mean, it looks like they did go through the entire process. They got approved. They have a device. Obviously, they're onboarded. There's a whole timeline here. There's all the product information is here. Obviously, it goes into a lot of technical detail. Here's a diagram of the actual minor customer support, hardware security, manufacturing information. The whole nine yards, they did go through the entire approval process. It is going to be very interesting to see if these if, if this company really just had a, a lapse in uh in judgment or if this was just a total mistake and misunderstanding it's going to be very interesting to see how this unfolds but for the moc to really come out and temporarily suspend them there must they must have some sort of legitimate evidence to support the fact that they are gaming the system with their hotspots now this is the actual cotex networks website i was very interested to come here and go to the about us uh, I'm just very, I was very curious. So it, it seems that they were founded in, in Beijing in 2017. They are not terribly old, but they seem to be, they claim to be very heavily involved in the internet of things space with R&D and different products and, ask, and access platforms and stuff like that. Here you go. There's a little timeline here that they provide of different, different milestones, it seems. And that's really all they give you here. Uh, that's really all they give you here on the About Us page. Quite interesting to take a look at at this point now, looking back and seeing that there is some sort of question things going on on their network and with their miners. Now, if we step back for a second, I think it's one thing to take note of that is very interesting is the fact that if this turns out to be an actual an actual intentional gaming of the network, I think that goes to show that where there is uh, growth and where there is success and where, where uh, there are bad people in this world that do bad things, this could be one of them. And I think it goes to show you that the the success that the Helium network has been having is obviously so much success that it is now drawing negative attention from people. And of course, we've seen scammers in this in this realm so frequently. Uh, we see them on YouTube. We see them on Twitter. We see them everywhere. So it, it's just uh, it goes to show you that the the network and Helium itself in general is really has come a long way and to a point where it's starting to get noticed, I guess, by people who are looking to profit illegitimately from it. Because look, these tokens are being speculated to become worth a lot of money down the road, along with other many other cryptos and the ability to just mine them for a few hundred dollars might seem enticing for people with uh, questionable, questionable morals, I guess you would say. But Guys, this is really interesting stuff. Let me know what you guys think, how they've handled this. Do you guys think that they handled it well? Do you think they're handling it poorly? Do you think it's fair? Do you think it's unfair? Let me know what you guys think. This is the first time I've seen something like this, so I'm interested to hear your guys' thoughts. If you enjoyed this, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I would really, really appreciate it, you guys. Thank you very much, but just like that, this video is over and I will see you next time.